Hello and welcome to Underdog Physics. That's right, I'm back. Oh uh, yeah! Today we'll be looking at another A-level practical from Air Dexel that's called Determine the Electrical Resistivity of a Metal. You will need 1.05 meters of constantan wire or a whole reel of it. A meter ruler. Two leads, one with, there we go, one with a crocodile clip on the end. A digital multimeter with an ohm meter setting. Nice. A twiddly doodad. No, wait, a micrometer screw gauge. You'll want to set up all your equipment like this, laying the constantan wire across the meter ruler, nice and flat in a straight line. I've used some masking tape on either end to make sure it stays straight, but don't stretch the wire because that's not very nice. I've clipped in the crocodile clip end onto the where zero is on the wire, and I have the other end of my cable free to probe the wire at different places, effectively having readings at different lengths of wire. Make sure you've got your ohm meter reading set on the highest sensitivity, so that would be where woo, this 200 is. I'm not expecting to have very high resistances, but we'll see. From here, it's just a simple case of measuring the resistance at 10 centimeter intervals along this piece of wire. I do this by taking the free end of my contraption and pressing it nice and firmly down onto where 10 centimeters is on the wire. I'll take this reading. And I'll just move it up the wire and take another reading, all the while making sure I record the lengths of wire I'm actually measuring the resistance of. Now we can measure the diameter of our wire. To take into account any kind of intolerances on how it's made or how it's been squashed about, I'm going to take about 20 different readings. You don't have to take 20, I've just got all the time in the world. So you can take about 10 and that should be enough, but make sure you ask your physics teacher first. Now's the time where you get to use the micrometer screw gauge. Here it is. Come on, focus, focus. There we go. The first thing you want to do is make sure that it's calibrated. So basically, when you read zero, it's actually zero. For large measurements, or large changes rather, you can use the big wheel here, because it's faster. But when you get closer to actually closing the gap, this one here, you want to start using the ratchet wheel on the other side. There we go. Oh, it's gone out of focus again. No matter. The important thing is, I'm no longer crushing the ends of the micrometer screw gauge itself, because it has this nifty little device fitted in. If it'll focus again, no, you'll just take my word for it, it is actually reading zero, so we're good. We're good to go. Oh yeah. Well, I won't go into too much detail now about how the micrometer works, but basically, if we open it up, these lines on the inside are millimeters. The lines underneath are half millimeters. These lines here, I've forgotten what they were. One hundredths of a millimeter. For example, here we're starting at five millimeters. As you can see, the numbers on the inside cylinder read five, and we're bang on zero here with our hundredths of a millimeter. This is five millimeters. This is 5.01 millimeters. This would be 5.05 millimeters. This would be 5.11 millimeters, and so on until we get to 5.5. If you look on the inside barrel, we've now uncovered one of the marks on the bottom row. 5.5 millimeters, 5.58 millimeters, 5.71 millimeters, and so on until we get to six millimeters. Simply put the wire in between the vice part and remember only to tighten up until this doodad clicks a bit. You don't want to squash the wire because that's not very nice. I'm going to do my measurements behind the scenes. Here are my results. For no particular reason, I'll draw your attention to the fact my length measurements are in meters and my results are all to the same number of significant figures. You'll want to plot a graph of the resistance against length, that is, resistance on the y-axis and length on the x-axis, which I can do through computer magic. Woo! To measure the gradient, you'll need to make sure you have a nice big triangle, but for me, it's just another click. Ha 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 ha! Using the equation for the area of a circle and my average wire diameter, I'll find out the cross-sectional area of the wire. I won't show you how to do this part. You lazy little gremlins. And likewise, you'll want to determine a value for the uncertainty in your measurement, which I won't do here, as it's not the point of this video. What I will let you know, though, is my value for the resistivity of this particular constant and wire. Fantastic! I hope you found that useful. If so, uh, feel free to subscribe, and maybe I can help you out again.